So we've said that Kant is trying to answer the question, what is your duty? And answer this question, he thinks he's going to answer the question, how should you live your life? But if we're going to understand what he means by a duty, we have to understand the difference between uh, a, what's called a Ketter's Paribus rule and an absolute moral rule or an absolute moral law. A Ketter's Paribus rule is, you know, a rule that you follow all other things considered equal. You know, if it's normal circumstances, if it's just everyday life, then yeah, sure, you follow these moral rules. We might even say that these are more rules that you violate in extraordinary, unusual circumstances where something's called for. So think about this, right? All other things considered equal, you stop at a stoplight when you're tra traveling down the road. If you're in your car, you see a stoplight ahead of you, it turns red, then sure, you, you stop at the stoplight. Now, this is not an absolute moral law. This isn't a law that you can never, ever absolutely violate. Uh, if you have somebody who's bleeding out in your car, then yes, you run the red light and take them to the hospital. Uh, it's a catcher's parables rule that you eat healthy. You eat food that is nutritious, doesn't have too many calories, uh, satisfies your hunger, and doesn't overburden your system with an overabundance of sugar, for example. But... It's not as if you're violating some absolute law that when you have some junk food. Every once in a while, I mean, even health experts can say every once in a while, sure, go ahead and treat yourself. You know, maybe not as much as what's shown here. That's <laughs> quite a big hamburger and surprise. But, it, you know, a little treat every now and then is not going to kill you right off the bat. So, we, yeah, sure, all, of the, all other things considered equal. The Ketter's Paribus rule, you eat healthy, but every once in a while, you know, sure, if you really need to, go ahead and have a little piece of junk food. And it's a Ketter's Paribus rule that you sleep for eight hours a day. All the things considered equal for your health, for the benefit of your health, for your continued you know, well-being. Yeah, go ahead and sleep for eight hours a day. But it, it's not as if you, know, you get less than eight hours sleep or even a little bit more. It's not as if you violated some absolute law that you... You know, you, you've just done something terribly wrong that can never be forgiven if you, if you either oversleep or don't get enough sleep. Well, that's it for Ketter's Paribus Rules. And you might be tempted to think that there are only Ketter's Paribus Rules, that there are no moral absolutes. Well, a little imagination would probably tell you that there are some rules that you think should never, ever be violated. There's absolutely no excuse or justification for violating such rules. It's probably easiest to think of examples of moral absolutes by thinking of those things which are just completely despicable, things that one human being should never do to anything else under any circumstance. For example, sexual violations on uh, human adults, uh, sexual violations against anything, poisoning a child, racism, things so despicable I am not going to depict them here. Nevertheless, you think that there are some things that should never be done. That rule is inviolable. That is an absolute moral rule. So Kant thinks your duty is a moral absolute. You cannot violate this law. Under no circumstances is it morally permissible to violate these rules, to violate this duty that you have. It's not a catcher's paribus law. A catcher's paribus law is something you can violate in extraordinary circumstances, but for Kant, your duty cannot be violated. It is morally wrong in any circumstance to break this rule. Well, this leads us very quickly to a question. What is our duty? Now, you might be thinking about duties such as patriotism. That's not what Kant talking, is Kant talking about. He's not trying to say Patriotism is a bad thing, but he's not. But he's also saying that your duty is not to patriotism. You might think your duty is to your family. Again, he's not saying this. This, is, this isn't what he means by duty. Your duty isn't in virtue of an oath that you've sworn, of your uh, citizenship, of your circumstance. Right? These would all be, um, in some sense, catcher's paribus rules, because not everybody has to follow these rules. Not everybody has to follow your duties. Right. In this sense, not everybody must be patriotic to the country to which you are patriotic. Not everybody has a duty to your family in the way that you have a duty to your family. Now, for Kant's, Kant's talking about a duty that's a moral absolute that applies to people 
in any and all circumstances. And according to Kant, your duty comes from rationality. You have a duty to rationality. For Kant, there is only one thing that is good, and that is the will. The will is not good in virtue of willing good things. The will is good in virtue of being rational. 